Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm happy to have this opportunity to share with you from the Word of God, especially as we try to discover life principles from this Word that will help us to go through the difficult moments of life. The title that I've chosen for my message today is The Ministry of Pain. And it is my prayer that God is going to help us, give us understanding of this word so that we become a better people as we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Our text of consideration comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and verses 1, which I am going to read in your hearing. And I hope you have your Bibles with you as you follow so that you can read with me as I read. My Bible says, Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. We live in a world that is full of sin. We live in a world where the devil is doing as he pleases because this is his kingdom, a kingdom of sin. He is in charge And whatever it is that he decides to do with the children of God on this earth, he seems to be able to do. And as we go through this life in this world of sin, we experience brokenness. We experience pain. There are so many things that can cause us pain in this life. Sometimes we even experience hurt, hurt by people, people who say things that are not right, about us, people who do things that are not right. We experience sickness, sickness that upsets and disrupts our life. I remember a few years ago, I was just walking in town and suddenly I collapsed. And the next thing I remember, I was in hospital in a bed. I don't know how I got there, but the doctor comes And I went for tests and they put these probes all over my body. And next thing is telling me I'm sick. I've got a chronic illness that is probably going to kill me. I did not ask for it, but there it was. And there are many people in this life who are experiencing brokenness because of poor health, struggling with illnesses that they have no power over, over which they are also helpless. Sometimes we go through brokenness in this world of sin because of poverty, because of struggle. You move around, you see people struggling, people that are not able to have accommodation for themselves, people that are not able to put food on the table, people that are not able to pay for their children's education, people that can hardly take care of the basic needs of life. And there's so much pain and struggle all around. Sometimes our lives become broken because of death, death of loved ones people that are so close to us, people that are so dear. They are there today and they are gone tomorrow, leaving a vacuum that cannot be filled and that breaks us. Sometimes we are broken in this life, not because of things that we don't have power over, but because of things that we have power over. When we make choices, choices that lead to brokenness. Sometimes we make poor life choices, we make mistakes, We find ourselves in failure, and it leads to a certain brokenness of life. But the source of all that brokenness is the devil, who is doing as he pleases in this world. Because even when we read in the Word of God, the Word of God is clear. He moves around like a rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he will use every opportunity that is possible to break us, even if it means breaking us so that we can never come up again. And the Bible also testifies That in this world, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against rulers of this evil dark world, against spiritual hosts in high places. And the devil will use everything at his disposal to break us. And then when we are broken, the question that all of us have to grapple with is what do we do when we are faced with pain in this life? What do we do when we are faced with brokenness. And I just want to propose to you today that whatever it is, whatever situation or circumstance that we may encounter in this life, 
There is value and there is profit in turning our eyes to look upon the Lord God who sits on his throne in heaven. And when we look up on God in the midst of the brokenness of life, we have an assurance that we are going to find strength, strength that is going to see us through whatever it is that we are going through. In the text that we read, which belongs to the bigger narrative of the story of Isaiah and King Uzziah, we read of Uzziah, the king of Judah, dying. And the Bible simply says it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. Uzziah was the king of Judah. He occupied a high position, a prominent position, an important position in life within the kingdom of Judah. He was not a common man. He was a king. And not only that, because this story is about Uzziah and, and Isaiah. Isaiah is the prophet of God who is operating in the mandate of God to be a prophet between four kingdoms, starting with Uzziah all the way to Hezekiah. And not only that, what we learn when we read about Isaiah is that there is a possibility that there was a relationship, a blood relationship that was there between Uzziah and Isaiah. So when Uzziah, the king of uh, Judah, died, it was a very personal thing for Isaiah. The person who died was the leader to Isaiah. The person who died was an important person in Isaiah's life. Now, given that Isaiah was a prophet, it means that obviously there was a lot of collaboration between the office of the prophet in Judah and the office of the king of Judah. These guys would see each other a lot. They interacted. They had a relationship, a very personal relationship. So the death of Uzziah was not something that was distant to Isaiah. It was a very, very personal thing. First, because of the position of their appointment, one as a king and the other as a prophet. And secondly, because of the possibility of a blood relationship that was there. And when the king died, we know what happens when prominent people die. The whole country comes to a standstill. Flags are flown at half-mast. Businesses are closed. Schools may not even open, depending on who it is that has died, because the whole nation is in mourning. We recently saw what happened when the, when the Queen of the United Kingdom passed away, Queen Elizabeth. Everything came to a standstill. World leaders had to leave whatever it is that they were doing in their different countries of responsibility to travel all the way to the United Kingdom to mourn the death of a queen. So you can imagine what it was like when Uzziah died. Everything in the kingdom of Judah stopped and came to a standstill. All the dignitaries of Judah, of the kingdom, and of neighboring kingdoms were coming together to mourn the death of a king. And Isaiah was also there. He had every reason to mourn. He had every reason to cry because the person who had died was someone who was very close to him. The death of Uzziah hit him hard. But what do you do in moments of life when you are faced with brokenness like Isaiah was faced with brokenness? And then the Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. Isaiah made a choice that in the midst of mourning the king of Judah, in the midst of mourning someone who was close to him, in the midst of mourning someone who was probably a blood relative to him, he made a choice that he was going to lift up his eyes and see the Lord God. And there's a point that I just want to emphasize on. It is not an easy thing to see the face of God when you are in the midst of pain. It takes purpose and discipline. You having to tell yourself to determine with a strong determination that I am going to turn my attention away. I am going to lift up my eyes and remove them from the pain that I'm experiencing to look into the face of my Lord, to look into the face of my Savior who is high and lifted up sitting on his throne. And all of us need, just like Isaiah, to be deliberate and intentional to make that choice when we are faced with pain, when we are faced with brokenness, to look into the face of God 
who is in heaven. We need to stop. We need to summon all the power that is within us and make a choice that we are not going to drown in our brokenness, but we are going to look up and we are going to see God who is in heaven. The devil will try to attack us in all possible ways. He is going to use ways that are very personal and ways that are very close to us to attack us and remove us from the position of looking at the face of God. The devil will break us. He will cause pain. He will use our finances to break us. He will use our health to break us. And sometimes the devil will even use our relationships within our families, among our relatives in our workplaces and in the communities in order to break us. But the question is, what will you do when you are faced with whatever brokenness that the devil throws your way? Isaiah chose to look upon God sitting on the throne high and lifted up in heaven. And we can choose to let our pain remove us from God. The choice is ours because no one can force us what to do. Or we can choose to let our pain be a mean Minister that actually draws us closer to the position of God. There are different ways to which people respond to pain or to brokenness in life. I've seen people when faced with death who respond to death by going to witch doctors to go and look for reasons why people die. They are faced with death, they are faced with a painful situation and instead of looking up to God who is in heaven, they choose that they're going to go to a witch doctor who is going to tell them that their aunt is the one who killed their 97-year-old grandfather. And when they've done that, they go back home. They cannot relate well with other people. They are fighting. There is conflict and there is no more peace and there is no more happiness in the house because instead of looking up to God in the midst of death in the family, they choose to look in different places. I have seen people who have turned to prostitution because they have been faced with the brokenness of hunger. Students at universities who, because they have not had breakfast and lunch, are going to live and sell away their dignity and value of life in exchange for a box of pizza or a few pieces of chicken and chips simply because they do not know how to handle the brokenness of the challenges of life when they come across them. They could have looked up to God. They could have come to church, knelt down and pray, understanding that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But they choose, chose instead of looking to God to look for solutions that are nowhere near the throne of God. And as a result, they derailed themselves and they removed themselves from the design and the purpose of God for their lives. What do you do when you are faced with a situation of brokenness or of pain in your life? I have seen people who, because of poverty, they cannot pay fees for their children. They cannot buy food for their families. They cannot build homes for their families. They are renting one room, being evicted and moving to another and instead of looking up to God who owns own the cackle on a thousand hills they try to find solutions for themselves instead of finding solutions in the throne of God that is in heaven they looked to crime trying to solve a temporary situation by creating a permanent problem what is it that you do when you are faced with the brokenness in your life there is no benefit at all in this life in turning to all these other things of this life when we are faced with brokenness. The only benefit that is there is to look up to God who is the source of all things, who is the cause of all things, who is able to deal with the brokenness that we face once in a while. I remember when we were children at the mission station, we would sing a song together with other children. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look softly in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow strangely dim. What do you do when you are faced with brokenness? You you can make a choice today to turn your eyes upon Jesus. And when you turn your eyes upon Jesus, the pain that you feel grows strangely dim. The brokenness that you carry on your back grows strangely dim. Whatever it is that is causing you to be surrounded by darkness grows strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. What do you do? You can allow your pain to minister to you and turn you to God. 
in the book of Psalms, David says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord because our help does not come from this earth. This earth is broken. This earth is wasted. This earth is full of pain and problems. And there is no solution that can come to us from an earth that is full of problems. Anything that we try to find on this earth is going to only create more problems for us. But when we lift up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help, we will find our help because our help cometh from the Lord. And the same psalmist says again, Thou, O Lord, art a shield to me, my glory and the, lifter of, and the lifter of my head. I cried out unto the Lord, and he had me out of his holy hill. Even at those moments when you are looking at yourself and you feel like there's no more help, Help from you, from yourself, from the people around you, or from anywhere else. There is a God who is in heaven, who is the lifter of your head, who is able to give you back your glory, who is able to shield you and to protect you as you go through the brokenness of your life. What do you do when you are faced with brokenness? On your, when you are faced with the brokenness in your life. What do you do when you are faced with brokenness in your life? I choose today to allow the pain of my life to be the minister that takes me up to the throne of God. Isaiah says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord God sitting on a throne. God was positioned. And God is not removed from his position by the challenges, by the problems, by the situations and circumstances that we face in this life. God's position is not threatened by the things that go on in our life. God cannot be dethroned by the troubles of our life. No one put him on his throne and there's no one who can remove him from his throne. Nothing that you are going through, it may seem heavy to you, but to God, God is able because he is positioned, he is in charge, and he is in control, sitting right where he should be sitting, running the affairs of this earth. That is why Jesus would say, whatever burden that you have, come unto me, all ye who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Because from the position that God occupies, he is able. He is a God who has power. He is a God who is unlimited. He is a God who is capable. And there is nothing in this life that God cannot do to heal the brokenness of our life. Isaiah does not just see God sitting on a throne. He sees him high and lifted up. He sees his position high and above the earth. David says heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. All right, let me break that down a little bit and say that from the position that God occupies high and lifted up, he is above everything that is on this earth. Whatever pain you may be going through. God is above it. He cannot be drowned by what is drowning you. And that is why you need to look up to him and see him sitting on his throne so that he can help you and he can lift you up. And Isaiah also goes on to mention that God not only was sitting high on a throne, high above and lifted up, but he was surrounded by the seraphim. Now the seraphim are a different class of angels altogether. A different class of angels. You know, you've got soldiers that serve the armies of nations. But among soldiers, you've got general duty soldiers. You've got, you've got some soldiers that will never carry guns, who wear uniforms, but are, that are there to perform community service or to do other duties that have nothing to do with war. But among soldiers, you've got a special group of soldiers who specialize in, 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 in the complicated and the difficult operations of war, the special operations kind of guys. If we're in the United States of America, we would be talking about the SEAL team, like the one that took out Osama bin Laden, uh, specialized, trained for war, equipped for death. And the seraphim are a group of angels in heaven who surround God, and they are angels of war, angels of battle, who are there to be deployed to do battle, to fight on behalf of the children of God who look up to his throne and call upon his name. And Isaiah, as he looks up, while others are mourning at the death of his cousin Uzziah, while others have stopped doing everything else and life no longer has a meaning, Isaiah deliberately chooses to look up into heaven and he sees God surrounded by a war 
of angels. Angels who are capable of fighting wars. Meaning to say, whatever it is that you're going through in your life, whatever brokenness you must contend with, look up to God because he is able to deploy angels who can fight for you. And not only that, as Isaiah is looking at the throne of God, he also sees supernatural things happening because sometimes you've got to look up, remove your eyes from that which is natural, remove your eyes from the terrible things that are happening around you and see God operating in the supernatural. He sees doorways shaking and he sees smoke filling the room that God is in. And all of this causes him to be held in awe, held in awe because of what he sees about God. And then the Bible goes on and it says that when Isaiah looked at God sitting on his throne, high and lifted up, surrounded by the seraphim, he cried out, woe to me, for I am undone. He was in the midst of mourning, mourning the death of the king of Judah, Uziah mourning the death of somebody that he had collaborated with as a prophet, someone that he had worked so closely with. And in the midst of mourning, this was a very painful and personal thing for him. He chose to look up to heaven and he saw God sitting on his throne. And what he saw about God sitting on his throne caused him to come undone. And he exclaimed, woe to me. War to me, that's an exclamation. War to me, I'm undone. Because there's something about seeing the face of God that will undo the position where you stand. There's something about seeing the face of God that will give you a different perspective of things. Even as Isaiah was mourning, he saw God and what he saw about God and did what he was experiencing concerning the death of Uzziah, the king of Judah. And not only that, when he looked at the face of God, his eyes were opened, he got an illumination, and he started to see the bigger picture of things in the world. He started to see the sin of the world. He started to see his own sin and what he saw about his own sin and the consequences of sin made him to go into a position of repentance. What do you do when you're faced with pain? Do you allow pain to minister to you? Isaiah allowed his pain to minister to him. And he looked up to God. Allow God to visit you. Allow God to draw close to you. Allow God to show you where you stand in your life. Allow God to show you your sinfulness. The more you gaze upon your sinfulness and the sinfulness of this world, the more you see the glory of God. That even in the midst of things going wrong in our life, God has exercised such grace on us that we are still able to see his face when we don't even deserve it. And God also moved after Isaiah had looked up to his throne to purge his sin, to cleanse him and give him a new assignment. Allow your brokenness to reveal to you the weaknesses of your life. Allow your brokenness to reveal to you the grace of God and the mercy of God over your life. Allow your brokenness to minister to you and lead you to a place where God will cleanse you and reposition you in life. Allow your brokenness to take you to a place where God is going to reassign you and put you in a new place altogether in life. I remember 2008, I found myself in a position of brokenness. A brokenness that I brought upon myself after a lifelong of making poor life choices, a whole life of adolescence and youth, of making poor life choices, a whole life of choosing the wrong things, having bad friends, wasting the times and opportunities of life. And in 2008, because of what I had chosen to do to myself, because sometimes we find ourselves in brokenness because of the things that we choose to do to ourselves, I found myself in a position of, I found myself in a position of brokenness. I found myself in a squatter camp outside of Maputo in Mozambique with no life, with no hope, no education, no financial stability, no job, 
no future as an illegal immigrant living in a very broken place in a country where I could not speak the language that was the main language there. It was a terrible place to be and probably the worst moment of my life. I was in extreme pain and I was filled with deep regret. And in that moment, instead of allowing myself to sink and be suffocated by the brokenness of my life, I saw the Lord God sitting on his throne, high and lifted up. God reached out to me. He lifted up my eyes. Instead of allowing me to be drowned and to be suffocated by the problems that I had created for myself, God lifted me up and I was able to see God high and above seated on his throne in charge and in control. And I was able to see hope beyond the brokenness where I was. I was able to see that it was possible for me to rise from the place of brokenness where I was. God ministered to me through the pain of my brokenness. And I was able to see just how sinful I was. God helped me to see how badly broken I'd been by the devil. And he opened me up and he made me ready to page me of my sin to give me a newness of life. And because I looked up to God in my moment of brokenness, God gave me strength. The same Isaiah says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And all of us must have the prayer, teach me, Lord, to wait upon you, no matter what it is that is going on in your life. What is it that you do when you are faced with brokenness? My message today has been for those people who are experiencing brokenness today. People who are in pain, people who are experiencing struggle, people who no longer see value in life, people who have been cornered by the devil one way or another. And I just want to encourage you, like Isaiah, do not look at the brokenness of your life. Don't allow it to drown you or suffocate you. But instead, lift up your eyes and look up to God who is seated high up on the throne in heaven. And as you see him high and lifted up, may your pain minister to you. And may God give you strength and give you a new assignment of life. God bless you.